Hey Pisces, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and today we're going to be doing a money and finances reading. Let's see how this area is unfolding in your life. Let's see if maybe there's any advice that Spirit wants to share with you through the cards that could help you best navigate this area of your life. But before we start, I want to thank you. Yes, I want to thank you for being here, for clicking on this video, and for joining me and hanging out. This is good for Pisces Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And I remind you to please take what applies for you, what resonates for you, and leave the rest behind because not everything, not every single thing, is going to be for you. There's a lot of Pisces watching. And the messages could be for other Pisces. We're in October, you guys. How cool is that? I know that I'm a Pisces and Pisces season is supposed to be my favorite, but honestly, I really like October. <laughs> I really, really do. And January as well. All right. King of Wands, okay, lovely. So you have a lot of energy. You have a lot of, you have like endless possibilities and endless potentials. You may be someone who's good at a lot of different things and it really does depend on what you choose to focus on where you're choosing to gain that success. So let's say that if you are someone who has five things that you're good at, how do you want to be compensated? Like. Which one do you want to be paid for? The the highest or the main one? Because you can, you know, pursue all of them. The King of Wands would be someone to pursue all of them. <laughs> you know, this is someone who has so much love and so much inspiration that it, like, oozes out of them. It's hard to contain all that inspiration and send it just in one direction. So you may be having a hard time, Pisces, um, choosing options and opportunities are not lacking they're not gonna lack okay they're not gonna be short on you ever <laughs> but you may your challenge may be to actually narrow down that focus some of you could be dealing with an Aries a Leo a Sagittarius some of you are having this like internal battle <laughs> It's like there's a part of you that wants to experience new things, wants to put yourself out there, to have fun, adventure, to really almost like follow that curiosity and see where it leads you. But then there's another part of you that's like, no, you have to do things in this way. You have to be disciplined. You have to be structured. You have to have everything, you know, organized and all of that. So there, there could be this kind of like back and forth. Some of you, it's not only within you. Some of you may have a Libra, Gemini, Aquarius person or someone with a lot of air traits, um, kind of like in your life, reminding you time and time again that it's not only about the fun, that it's not only about the adventure, that it's not only about the ambition, but also about, you know, strategy and grounding things into place. So you could have like an air sign, manager, <laughs> assistant, boss, uh, creative, manager, you know. Recently, there has been a balancing here. Your energy has balanced in such a way that what you're giving is what you're receiving. That may have happened when you started maybe making more money, maybe you started getting more recognition, maybe you started um, almost like recognizing your value because of how maybe clients saw you, employees, coworkers. And that recognition placed you in a space in which you have more authority, you have a say, you get to choose 
more consciously where and how you want to work or live. But there is a little bit of scatteredness that keeps showing up here. Some of you have to be a little careful with your ego, yes. Because um, some of you have been shown that you're really good at what you do. That you're really, really good at what you do. And to some of you, I'm sorry to say, I know you're not going to want to hear it, but for some of you, it has gone to your head in such a way that you're not really putting in effort anymore. Or you're not really um, taking care of the details, making sure that everything is running smoothly, making sure that you are going out of your way to make everyone feel loved, appreciated, taken care of. Some of you have gotten a little bit like, oh, you know, whatever, they should be happy to be able to work with my company or whatever. And like some of you may have gotten a little, a little, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Make coins. Yeah, some of you may have gotten a little, like, not drama queen, but like, Ah, oh, what is it that I'm trying to say? Comment below, help me out. Like a... Uh... Yeah, like a brat. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I was gonna say, but kind of like the equivalent, right? It's like, someone, you may feel like you are so good at what you do, and you may be so good at what you do, that you start to maybe take it for granted, or play a little bit too hard to get, or charge a little bit too much, or... You know, and not because you wouldn't be able to charge that, not because you are not worth it, but it, because it translates into some level of like arrogance. How can you maybe be a little bit more relatable, a little bit more approachable? How can you... refocus things in such a way that you're serving instead of impressing. There are people out there who are not half as good as you are, who are not half as smart, who don't have half the resources you have. Confirmation. But they are doing really well because they care. Because they care. Because they listen. Because they show up and they serve. Because they're humble. Because they make themselves available. Within reason, of course. If you need to set in place a better structure, maybe hire a team, maybe get an assistant, maybe um, eliminate some responsibilities from your to-do list in order to be more present for your clients, your investors, your board of directors, your students, do that. The more available you are to listen to people's concerns, to really hear them out, to get constructive criticism, to be present, the more successful you're going to be, Pisces. No doubt about it. For some of you, this is what's missing. I see this comparison between like a master and a beginner. Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever, you know, run across a person like this. It has happened to me. When someone is a master for so long, they take it for granted. Even like superstars, celebrities, it's like they know that they can be grumpy and cranky and they know that they can show up half-ass and they're still going to have massive success because of what they have already done or built or what they already know. And they become divas. That's what I, oh, just thank you. That was the word I was gonna use earlier. 
divas. But then, you know, there may be this beginner who really, really cares. They want to do things in every way possible, do them right. They want to give the best experience to everyone. They want to show up. They want to become that master eventually, you know? And therefore, they pay attention to details. If the beginner maintains that attitude all the way, it doesn't matter if they're talented, it doesn't matter if they're good, it doesn't really matter. You know, people feel loved, people feel heard. And no matter how good the diva is, eventually, they're gonna piss enough people off <laughs> to, you know, not be counted as a master anymore, even if they are the best at their trade. So that's what I'm getting here, okay? If you're feeling abandoned, if you're feeling not recognized, if you're feeling unseen, unheard, if you're feeling like people don't care anymore, maybe it's because you haven't been caring about them in a long time. And it may be a reflection of you. So get off of your diva mode, <laughs> diva horse, diva throne, and get back to the basics. Get back to interactions. Make every interaction count. Make every experience for every student, client, investor be the best it can be. Every single time. Show that you care and others will show you that they care. All right, Pisces. So that is what I got for you. Super interesting. I love this reading. I think it's the first time this message has ever come across. And I love it. So let me know what you think. Let me know if this resonates with you at all. Comment below if you've known someone like this. And yeah, I want to I wanna read all about it. So yes, Pisces, I'll see you in the next reading. Bye, my loves.